In the spotlight tonight, the angry Mrs. Romney. Paul Ryan continues to fail totally at his primary job of making journalists forget about Mitt Romney's secret tax returns. Natalie Morales did not forget about the tax returns when she sat down with Ann Romney in an interview for Rock Center with Brian Williams that will air tomorrow night. And Mrs. Romney didn't like that one bit. I know it's not a question that is welcomed, but must be asked because a lot of people still are asking why not be transparent and release more than the 2010 and the estimates for 2011. Have you seen how we're attacked? Have you seen what's happened? It's It's been in the press quite a bit. Now are you angry that it's been in the press? I mean should you not it's, be questioned about your finances? We have been very transparent to what's legally required of us but the more we release the more we get attacked. The more we get questioned, the more we get pushed. And so we have done what's legally required, and there's going to be no more, there's going to be no more tax releases given. And there's a reason for that, and that's because of how, what happens as soon as we release anything. Mitt's financial disclosures when he was governor are huge. If people want to really look and see any question they have, mm -hmm. the other thing they have to understand is that Mitt is as honest, his integrity is, is just golden. Well, no, Mrs. Romney, that's the problem. His integrity is not just golden. He is not honest. It is hard to think of a nominee for president who has done more public lying on his way to that nomination than Mitt Romney. He lies about himself. He lies about what he has said. He lies about positions he has taken and then contradicted. He lies about his opponents. He has lied relentlessly about the president. He has lied about what the president has said. And so he has left America with absolutely no reason to think that lying about his money and lying about his taxes and even lying to the Internal Revenue Service about his money is somehow beneath Mitt Romney. The angry Mrs. Romney wasn't finished. We pay our taxes. Notice, and this is very important, notice that she said we pay our taxes. She did not say we pay our income taxes, our federal income taxes. Of course they pay property taxes on their mansions. Of course they pay sales taxes on their cars. Of course she pays gasoline taxes when she fills up her Cadillacs with gas. What we don't know is whether Mr. and Mrs. Romney pay any income taxes at all. Senator Harry Reid says he has reason to believe that they haven't paid income taxes for 10 years. Mitt Romney, like his wife, is very careful to never, ever, ever use the phrase income taxes when he talks about them paying taxes. The Romneys are so careful not to use the phrase income taxes, so lawyerly coached on that, that they have now entered a zone of reasonable suspicion that their accounting shenanigans have really left them paying nothing in federal income taxes. Nothing in the tax returns that Mrs. Romney just angrily promised to continue to hide. We pay our taxes. We are absolutely beyond paying our taxes. We also give 10 percent of our income to charity. I'm sorry. But I don't believe you, Mrs. Romney. I don't believe you give 10% of your income to charity. What income? Your gross income? Your net income as defined by you or MIT or your adjusted gross income? I don't believe you give 10% of your income to charity. And the only way you can prove you give 10% of your income to charity is by releasing your tax returns. I know that the Mormon Church expects you to give 10% of your income, but I have no reason to believe that you do. And how embarrassing would it be for you, admit, to release tax returns that revealed that you did not consistently keep your promise to the Mormon church of donating 10% of your income. Is that one of the pieces of ammunition that you're so afraid we will get if you release your secret tax returns? The only reason we don't disclose anymore is, you know, we just become a, a bigger target. 
So it's because you'll just continue to face more questions. That will just, it'll just give them more ammunition. Ammunition. Ann Romney is saying right there that she knows there are things in the Romney's tax returns that are ammunition against them. There are things in their tax returns that are bad, that are politically disastrous, that America will not accept as reasonable. She calls it ammunition. Ammunition is what comes out of a smoking gun. And the Romneys have decided that that smoking gun is so dangerous to them that they would rather go through another 83 days of questions about hiding their tax returns. They'd rather do that than reveal their tax returns because of that smoking gun. They have clearly made that calculation. Releasing the tax returns would be more damaging to them than hiding the tax returns. And hiding the tax returns has been very, very damaging and will continue to be very damaging to them. But the Romneys are absolutely resolved about this. There's going to be no more tax releases given. That's it. That's final. The Romneys have spoken. It continues be, to be perfectly reasonable and becomes increasingly reasonable to now suspect that the Romney tax returns contain the political disaster, the political ammunition of a tax felony in them. He is one of the precious few Americans who hold Swiss bank accounts and other foreign bank accounts. So many of them were violating the law by not reporting those bank accounts that the government, the IRS, gave up and they came up with a special amnesty program to allow them to finally get straight with the government and report those accounts that they were illegally hiding for years without being subject to felony charges. They created a tax amnesty program for people like Mitt Romney with accounts like Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney is exactly the kind of person, exactly the kind of foreign bank account manipulator, exactly the kind of tax filer who has taken advantage of that amnesty program and avoided felony charges. That process, if he did that, would show up on precisely the tax returns he is hiding. The years of tax returns that he is hiding would have that amnesty in there if he used that amnesty to avoid felony charges. It would show him, in effect, confessing to a felony and then being granted amnesty for that felony. Mitt Romney's candidacy could not survive the revelation of that tax felony, not for one day. He would be denied the nomination at the convention if he released tax returns now showing us such a felony. The Romneys know that. The Romneys are absolutely right to hide their tax returns. If there is a felony that would be revealed in those tax returns, even one they got amnesty for, and they may be right politically to hide those tax returns if Harry Reid is right and they have paid zero in federal income tax for 10 years. If what Ann Romney calls the ammunition in their tax returns is that bad, then they are politically absolutely right that they must they must continue to hide those tax returns in order to continue the viability of their presidential campaign. There's nothing we're hiding. You know, we, we've had a blind trust for how many years? We don't even know what's in there. It's been managed by a blind trust since before Mitt was governor. Oh, Mrs. Romney, you remember what Mitt taught you about blind trusts, don't you? The blind trust is an, is an age-old uh, ruse, if you will, which is to say um, you can always tell the blind trust what it can and cannot do. You give a blind trust rules. Joining me now is David K. Johnston, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter, a tax columnist for Reuters, and a professor at Syracuse Law School. Uh, David, on the blind trust, those are, to my eye, the phoniest things that politicians ever try to hide behind. Well, they are, and notice how she slips off the question of the tax returns by going to the blind trust. But what I see in this, uh, Lawrence, is a preemptive defense. If those tax returns come out, the, return, the response you're going to get from the Romneys is, the blind trust did it. We didn't do it. The blind trust did it.
Ah, I see it. That that I, I see how they would try to play that. I don't think it would work, David. I don't think this. If if if, I, if it, I I believe now that we're at the point in this story where there's, the Romneys know there is something in those tax returns that is so politically explosive they couldn't survive it. I mean, they've ta they take political hits. They know how to take political hits. They've made a calculation. Those tax returns will destroy us. Yes, I, I agree with you about that. I think that's very clear. I'm also struck by Ann Romney's uh, taking the position that we have met the minimum standard. Uh, when <laughs> I was a Mormon elders quorum president, I taught people Doctrine and Covenants 5826. He who must be commanded in all things is a slothful and not a wise servant. And I was instructed to teach that that applied to every aspect of your life. You were not to do the minimum, you were to do the right. You were to choose the right. In fact, there's a Mormon song for little children, choose the right. Well, this is not choosing the right by any stretch of the imagination. And, and let me just say, I see no evidence so far in anything that the Romneys have done with their tax returns that would any way be a problem for them. It, it, legally or otherwise, if they were not involved in a presidential campaign, if they were not involved in a political cam campaign. The point you were just making, David, is that you live to a totally different standard there. If he was just a regular businessman, took advantage of the amnesty, as so many of them have done with his kinds of money, uh, that would be yes. no big deal. The guy's running for president. That changes things. That's exactly right. In the case of Timothy Geithner, all he had to do was pay the penalties as well as the taxes and interest when he cheated, and in my view, he had met the standard of the law. Uh, in this case, clearly, the Romneys, uh, if they were not involved in running for office, you get an amnesty program, you can take advantage of it. Uh, but if they come out with that's in fact what they did and we don't know but if that is what they did yeah that's the end of any candidacy david k johnston thank you very much for joining me tonight